Frankenstein's Cat by Curtis Jobling. Now we all know the story of Frankenstein and his monster. Frank was a misunderstood, some would say mad doctor, who made a man out of body parts. Monster goes mad, lots of tears, end of story. Well, the monster wasn't the doctor's first experiment. There was another. Meet Frankenstein's cat. Funny looking, isn't he? The doctor named him Nine. Not because cats have nine lives, oh no, but because that's how many cats it took to make him. A Persian here, a Siamese there, a couple of tabbies and a few common moggies thrown in for good measure. Well, as one can imagine, life is never going to be easy for a cat that looks like this. The folk who live around the castle like things that are just plain and ordinary, and clearly Frankenstein's cat is no ordinary cat. But Frankenstein's cat was determined to make some friends. With a stinky spring in his stuttering stride, his first port of call was the castle kitchen. The sweet smell of pastries cooking attracted him like a bee to honey. Frankenstein's cat just slinked on up to the cook and rubbed against her legs. He you! exclaimed the cook, pinching her nose. What is that awful smell? Only me! said Frankenstein's cat. May I help? Yes, said Cook. You can start by getting your pongy paws out of my kitchen. Be off with you! After a swift swipe from Cook's broom, Frankenstein's cat scampered away. I know, he thought. I'll try the courtyard. I'm sure to find a friend there. He hopped into the yard where he bumped into some village children playing. Hello, folks, beamed Frankenstein's cat. What are you playing? May I join in? Poo! Yuck! What is that? One boy stepped up, but not too close, as the air around Frankenstein's cat was rather like a sprout farm. We're playing hide and seek he said. Sure, you can join in. Go and hide. Frankenstein's cat bounded off excitedly. He knew just the place to hide. Once there, he waited and waited and waited. Whatever's happened to them, he thought. They should have found me by now. I'm not even that well hidden. Only when he got up and looked around did he spot them playing in a faraway field. With a sigh and a sniff, he went back into the castle. In the hall, he found the butler, spring cleaning the castle. Frankenstein's cat skidded up to his feet, tail swishing excitedly and only occasionally falling off. Please, Mr. Butler, may I help you with the cleaning? I'll be ever so good. Please, please. Curling his nose, the butler looked him up and down. Hmm, I suppose so. I don't really see what trouble you can cause. That was the butler's big mistake. He didn't look hard enough. Twenty minutes, lots of chaos and plenty of broken crockery later. Frankenstein's cat was shown the exit. It's not my fault my limbs have a life of their own. I didn't choose them, he grumbled. Out! shouted the butler pointing to the door. Fed up, Frankenstein's cat went to the doctor's laboratory, where his master was hard at work. It's now God, said the cat. I'm lonely and I need a friend. He shuffled about on his mismatched feet before settling by the fire. And that's when he had his idea. He didn't have so many. This was quite a special occasion. He looked up at the doctor with bright eyes. Well, one was bright, the other was a bit dull. Make me a companion, master, please. And so the doctor set to work. As the doctor chopped and sewed, stitched and sawed, Frankenstein's cat paced back and forth anxiously, 
nervous as a newborn kitten, something he'd never properly been. Oh, he thought, a friend, a friend, what will it be? He checked himself in the mirror. I hope it's a girl cat. His thoughts were interrupted by his master's voice. Enter, he called. And Frankenstein's cat rushed in. He saw a shape draped in a white sheet lying on the doctor's operating table. As the storm rumbled overhead and lightning lit up the laboratory, the doctor pulled hard on a huge metal lever. Electricity coursed along the cables to the body on the table. Slowly but surely, it began to twitch and shudder. The figure sat upright, the sheet still covering it. The doctor stepped up and grabbed the edge of the sheet. A warm smile spread across his face. Frankenstein's cat, said the doctor, pulling the sheet away. Meet Fifi. The cat felt giddy. Frankenstein's dog. The cat felt sick. With a screech of horror, Frankenstein's cat leaped a good four feet into the air, legs whirring before turning tail and sprinting for the door. Frankenstein's dog replied with a bellowing, stinky woof before lurching after him on her clumsy great paws. And that is how our sorry story ends, with Frankenstein's dog chasing Frankenstein's cat around the castle for forever and a day. If there are any morals to be found in this story, and I'm not sure there are, then how about this? What you get isn't always what you ask for. Just bear that in mind when you ask for a puppy next Christmas. <laughs>